Hello everyone, Anita here and welcome to another video. Now before I talk to you about this artwork, I would like to mention that because it's a very short clip, in the beginning here I'm doing a little bit of an experiment. Uh, um, if you watch my previous video, you will know that I have been thinking for a very long time that or, hmm, for a while, okay, for a while, that I really want to try outlining my artwork with brown, with brown ink to be precise. However, I do not own um, acrylic ink and the regular sepia ink, it's, yeah, it's a bit runny, so, uh, like, it, it's not waterproof, basically. And it's been bugging me. <laughs> but I am the kind of person who doesn't just go and buy um, I remember about these things just before I'm painting and um, then I just want to paint. I don't want to wait for the delivery or go to the store and then I forget when the issue is over. And that's pretty much e anything. <laughs> so at that moment when I was preparing to paint this, I really wanted to use the brown and I figured, you know what? I could try and use the acrylic gouache that I have. Uh, Holbein's Acryla Gouache. I have a whole box of it and it's pretty much at the moment unused because I'm not working anything on wood um, or just, you know, it's gouache after all. But yeah, so I could actually try and use it because that's almost like watercolor. Um, you can dilute it to be watercolory <laughs> to have the same consistency and then it dries waterproof. So I was like, okay, this might work, Let, let's try it. So I mixed uh, a color that I was happy with. Um, there is no, I don't have anything that would closely re resemble sepia. So I've added, uh, I think there there is burnt sienna or something. It's a very, very warm uh, brown that's in the set. So I've added a little bit of black just to cool it off just to cool it down a little bit. Unfortunately, the blue and brown in that set do not mix very well. So yeah, so that's why it worked perfectly. So I'm not complaining. And uh, and yeah, and then I've diluted it quite a, quite a lot, uh, and I've just started drawing with it, painting with it. <laughs> you will not see the whole process of me painting because it, uh, painting with a uh, painting an outline with a brush. Uh, if you want to be, if you don't know really what you're doing and you're experimenting, which was what I was doing, is really hard, at least for me. Um, so there was a learning curve and I was trying, you know, different things, different moves, different different sketchy, painty strokes. <laughs> and so it actually was really difficult for me to record that. So at some point I just gave up. I tried my best, but at some point I was like, you know what, this is going to turn into a disaster unless I'm going to just bend over the paper with my nose in it. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, of course, but just really focusing on the paper instead of focusing on two things at the same time, because that's unfortunately what you have when you're recording. Your Half of your mind is constantly in the recording because, you know, you can't put your head in there. You're, you know, you have to be out of the camera's way. And the camera is also physically in front of you, so it's really hard to, you know, focus on the paper. Um, so that's what, I've what I did. And I have to say it worked perfectly. There was this one moment when I put the first wash uh, and I was really nervous about it. I put the first wash of water and it looked like it would blur, like it would run, like the color would run. And I really do believe it run a little bit, but it wasn't visible in the end. After I just added watercolor, other, the first washes, it just wasn't visible. It worked beautifully. With added pressure, I was adding so many layers of watercolor. It didn't blur, it didn't become, you know, when you put a, a water over watercolor, it becomes slightly blurry. It doesn't have that sharpness anymore. And that's what I was afraid of. It didn't happen. So I'm really, really pleased. It wouldn't resist watercolor either. So you, I could layer over it. Very happy with that as well. And so, yeah, that, that's a very, very good very successful experiment. However, the results, even though I tried my best to have that the strokes to be very sketchy, 
it just wasn't what I was looking for. So even though the experiment was successful and the effect was really nice, it wasn't what I was looking for. So I would just keep looking. That's, you know, that that's life. <laughs> so here I am adding um, the first washes of color. And now I can tell you about this piece. This piece is uh, something I've painted for this new challenge I'm taking part, of, uh, part in this year. And it's called uh, Weekly Character Design Challenge, I believe. Um, it's... Um, I don't know if you're familiar, I've made a few videos back in the day about the 52-week illustration challenge. Now that challenge uh, ended this year, it just closed completely. And so a few people, um, well, I, I don't know how to say, but the, basically the weekly uh, character design challenge, there's so many familiar faces. I was invited by one of the people who were in the uh, 52 week illustration challenge. They were really generous to invite me. And um, yeah, so there are so many familiar faces and I'm very happy. Now I got permission <laughs> to actually mention this, but I will warn you that if you want to join that group, it's a group on Facebook, I will not be sharing a link. Um, however, you can find it really easily. You just have to, you know, search for it. And if you want to actually join that group, you have to be really committed to posting and to participating. So bear that in mind. <laughs> However, I, I was told everyone is still very welcome. So yeah. So that's that. And the first, uh, the theme for the first week was pet. So how do I, how did I get to this idea? Because this is a sheep, um, kind of a, you know, a person. <laughs> this is a girl with sheep features, at least in my head. Uh, she has sheep ears, okay? And she has curly hair. So, anyway, um, I really wanted to draw a little bit more of those starry ship that, sheep that I've been painting lately. I've had a few different ideas for, for this week, but basically I was kind of, I like the idea of a teacup pet. <laughs> you know, when you see those little pictures of, of kittens and teacups and they're so cute and, you know, they're tiny and hamsters and teacups and I thought, why not sheep? <laughs> so I really wanted to just, um, whenever I do challenges like that, I try to go for the least obvious thing, at least, you know, to a certain degree, but uh, just try to go to a less obvious uh, topic of, of painting. So normally when you would think about pets, it's just all your household, typical, you know, hamsters, cats, dogs, these things. So I was like, okay, I really, I had the idea for a, a cool dog painting, which I will still probably do at some point. And in this case, I just thought, you know what? Um, no, I want to do something different. And I was thinking about painting some chickens because, yeah, chickens are my favorite lately. And then I was thinking about wanting to paint some of the starry sheep. And I've been sketching in my sketchbook some ideas of things in cups. And then this girl popped up and I thought, wow, this is perfect. I love this. I love this so much. And uh, it's, it's you know, a sheep can still be a pet, but it's not that obvious. And it's just, you know, a twist. And I'm hitting the microphone again. Sorry for that, <laughs> if you hear it. So, yeah. Uh, but my starry sheep, the ones that I keep painting once in a while, they are blue. And one of the things I've promised myself this year was that I'm going to experiment more. I don't have any goals per se because I decided not to make any goals, okay? I'm just going to do my best and that should be it. <laughs> um, so I had a, a, just basically I wanted to do a few things with my art uh, because I've been feeling so unsatisfied with it lately. And one of the things is to experiment, experiment more with different things, different uh, colors, different uh, ways of shading, uh, trying to be more bold with my shading because I kind of, I really tend to go towards pastel colors um, a bit. I, I'm, it's not like I'm, I wouldn't say I'm afraid, but I'm easily satisfied. <laughs> so I'm like, I could go further, but why? <laughs> this is pretty. <laughs> Um, but no, in this case, my this this is the first painting of probably many you will see this year. I'm trying to paint without background, so don't get surprised that there there is no background in this case because I'm trying to allow myself 
not to paint any backgrounds. Uh, I, I keep pushing myself that there has to be a background. In my head, an illustration is not finished until I've painted that background. And so that's another thing I'm really trying to, you know, allow myself a no background situation and concentrate more on just putting an extra effort into the painting. Uh, because when you are making videos, at least in my case, and juggling that with, um, you know, with the, the thing that brings in the money <laughs> with that artwork, um, you, I am, I'm settling a lot. Uh, I thought that after Inktober, I would actually have more, uh, I will be more, um, bold and try more things because, you know, this was a whole month of me trying new things. And I thought there would be more of that, you know, tonal value difference. But no, there was nothing. I mean, I, I see that I would like to put some extra, um, uh, you know, depth in, in a separate, in some places in my paintings. But I'm thinking, Anita, you're pressed for time. You don't have to do it, okay? It still will be beautiful if you don't do it. And I'm thinking, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. Um, I really want to just have a little, give a little bit more time to myself and um, just spend a little bit more time adding the color, building the layers, you know, not feeling bad at, oh, you, you don't have to, I don't know, it's just generally I want to spend more time perfecting the, that painting and try new things. <laughs> so in this case, um, like I've said, I want to, I will be wanting <laughs> to add more depth to kind of push the colors a bit further. Uh, just to have the value values a little bit different than just one flat picture. Um, and so in this case, I've decided that I'm going to start small. That's why there's no background. And I'm also painting only with two colors. Uh, there's that really nice mixture of... Um, there are basically just two colors. I think I'm using the Sennelier yellow. I don't even remember what the name is, but just the Sennelier yellow. And then um, the Quinn Rose, that those two colors, and they're mixed together to create a bit of a <sighs> warmer pink, and then a little bit more of a deeper yellow, <laughs> a bit more on the, on the orange side. And I'm trying to just do something with those colors. And I have to say that I was really, really intimidated by this painting. I always am when I'm trying something new. Uh, that's another, like I'm saying, you know, I am really um, not letting myself go. <laughs> I am really trying just to have this perfect picture for the video, everything at the same time. And I'm not letting myself make mistakes. I'm not letting myself experiment. I'm settling a lot of times on the comfortable, familiar, just because I know that I have to make a video. I don't want to make paint something that's just embarrassing. <laughs> it doesn't have to be beautiful, but that's not embarrassing. And that kind of stops me from, you know, experimenting. So in this case, um, I forgot where I was. That's good. Oh, that's right. I was very intimidated. I was very intimidated by this painting. And so I've decided that, okay, I'm going to save my progress. <laughs> I've actually scanned the line art before, just in case. I, I thought, you know what, if it doesn't work out for the video, I can always do it digitally, right? It's it's not going to be a big deal. So I've saved my progress. <laughs> and something that I don't do a lot for personal work, I've actually done thumbnails for different color choices. And so that was, that was really funny for me because I was so stressed about this whole thing. <laughs> I wanted to have a good starting point uh, so that, you know, I wouldn't make a stupid mistake just because I was rushing or I was, you know, nervous or something. And so I had this, um, and it's a good thing, because uh, when I was painting this, I was really loving that whole pastel vibe that was happening. I was like, oh, this is so pretty. <laughs> why don't you just, why don't, you know, why don't I just do this? This is pretty. <laughs> But in my sketch, I was re using really, really bold colors. 
Um, and so I just, I was like, no, I need to, you, you can, okay? You promised yourself to be a bit bolder. And I just kept adding, keep, kept layering the colors until they had the same value as the sketch. And I was really, really happy with it. I was really proud of myself. And at this point, I'm, I'm loving it a lot. Um, however, in my original, like the thumbnail sketch, I had um, a deeper shadow, just to push it further, a deeper shadow, and they were the shadows were mixed with blue, so they're on a cooler side, of course. And um, so I had this um, bluish purple at the bottom, and then I had this weird greenish color at the top to be the, the shade, the shadow color of the, of the orange. And I really liked that on the sketch in Photoshop. Um, that's where I was making the sketch. And that might have been my mistake. I should have just printed it out and, and played a little bit with watercolors. Um, I'm not hating it, but I couldn't mix the same colors <laughs> with what I had available. Um, I am not the best at mixing. I see that I, I, I'm... That's another thing. I'm settling for my comfortable colors for my favorites, you know? And when you're illustrating, at least the way I do, uh, I don't need much uh, in terms of, of shadows because I've never... I'm not, If you notice in my work, I don't really put any shadow colors. I usually use glazing rather than mixing for shadows. And I think I'm just going to stick with that um, because I love it much better. <laughs> I don't know. It's just... I, I like it. I like the effect much better of glazing. Um, so that, that was a problem. Another problem I've encountered actually is that my, my watercolors were lifting a, a bit more than what I'm used to. So I, I'm assuming this is just, you know, I, I'm still learning about what I like in watercolors. So, um, the more I paint, the more I'm thinking that perhaps, um, colors that are permanent, um, as in staining, are probably better choice for me because I do much more... I'd never lift, so I don't need them to be lifting. And... Uh, unless I make a mistake. <laughs> and I really do like glazing, so yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that perhaps some staining colors will be a better choice for me. But for now, we're working with, you know, what we have. It wasn't bad, it just surprised me, you know? I could still work with it. Uh, perhaps it's also because I was adding a lot of that pigment. It was a lot of layers. Uh, pigment was building, you know, like I've said, I'm not used to adding that much intensity of color, especially in colors I'm not working with that much. So, you know, that, that also was, it's just everything is a learning process. And that's what I'm saying. To, this year I'm experimenting. So don't expect any big watercolor paintings. Uh, anything very complicated because this year is for learning, experimentation. I feel like I'm in at this point in my illustrating career where I can just let go the pressure a little bit. Um, I have something to kind of fall back on, if anything. Um, you know, the financial situation is not that bad, so I don't have to keep pushing for very, very that every single illustration has to be finished. I can let myself go and just do stuff for fun. I know it sounds silly, maybe, because I don't talk about it that much, but I, yeah, but perhaps I'll make a video about it sometime, sometime soon. So then I just kind of gave up on adding the layers of, of shadow um, because it was lifting too much for, for my, you know, for my liking. And I also wasn't loving what I was seeing. Um, the, the shadows were not doing what I wanted them to do. Learning curves again. <laughs> so I've decided to go and add another step, which is always for me, um, colored pencil. Uh, I usually, I, for me, colored pencil is what I use to, if there's anything I, I consider a mistake or that it's not as beautiful as I thought it would be, colored pencil fixes that for me, always. There's never been a case where colored pencil did not fix the situation. In this case, you know, if you're wondering, I could not find my um, sharpener. I have no idea where I put it. And I had only one white pencil. White pencils are also gone for some reason. And so I couldn't uh, sharpen my white pencil and it had this really, really huge tip. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not very good for details, so I, I was struggling a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just kept adding layers of colored pencil. And unfortunately, I don't have that much um, recorded because at some point my battery ran out and I didn't notice. It's not a big um, part of painting because, you know, I'm just deepening the colors, adding a little bit of highlight, adding a little bit of, um, you know, blue on the shadow areas, um, adding a little bit of extra... Um, purples where the, the the in the in the cup in the transparent cup and uh here you can actually i, I realized <laughs> i realized i made a mistake so i'm showing you what i've what i've added pretty much um so yeah and uh oh and maybe a little bit about the the idea of the painting in itself um it's just this cup which has a ma magical liquid in it and the sheep are coming out of it and these are not the starry sheep because I didn't want to use blue in this picture. I do love blue. I prefer blue. It's my fav favorite color and I go for it always. So I wanted to say no to blue for once. And that's why they're pink because, just, just because. So yeah, and um, now I'm adding, at this point I was hating this painting <laughs> because it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. Um, so I'm adding the white details because I was like, you know what, we're finishing it because I knew I was probably just tired. And indeed, once I stepped back and I came back to the painting, I loved it again. So when you're hating something, take a step back, you know, take a break, drink a coffee or tea, um, you know, do some chores and come back. And most of the time, the painting is just beautiful. So yeah, so that's pretty much it for that painting process. There's nothing really groundbreaking in it, but for me, it was a challenge. It was a different way of thinking about a painting. Uh, I kept catching myself on trying to figure out ways to add backgrounds <laughs> constantly, but I didn't and I'm really proud of myself. So yeah. Finally caught up with the, uh, the I am a week late late with the with the challenge be, just because I was so intimidated by this painting, but I'm actually really looking forward to the next week and I hope I'm hoping that I will be able to um, record every single week just to have um, videos coming up for you guys, you know, kind of um, on, on a schedule. But unfortunately, soon I will be starting work on on. A paid project and that will be taking my priority so I'm, I'm hoping i'm hoping for the best guys hope with me <laughs> so yeah thank you so very much for watching if you like this video please hit the like button and if you are new to this channel then consider subscribing you know i have a lot of art videos and there will be more coming so <laughs> once again thank you so so very much for watching guys and i will see you in the next video bye